we're good to go. All right. <clears throat> Ruben. Ruben Camacho. Superstar. <laughs> Superstar. Um, first of all, thank you very much for coming in. Oh, thanks for having me. Now, I'm going to try not to speak for you very much. Sure. But a little intro on you, from my perspective. You started approximately a year ago in real estate, right? Yeah, uh, December, uh, November, December of last year. Got it. So, in that year, you've become uh, one of maybe the top salesperson in this brokerage, if not pretty close. I don't have all your numbers in front of me, but in a very short time, you've gone a long way. Okay, most people do not realize that type of success, maybe for their whole career, but you've gotten off to a very hot start. And clearly there's a reason, reasons for that. So I'm hoping part of what uh, you can share with us today is some of the stuff that you've been doing. Definitely. I imagine that a lot of what you're going to say is centered around fundamentals, centered around stuff that uh, people who have come before you and have been successful have uh, not told you to do, but suggested that you do, <clears throat> and you've listened. Yeah. And over time, I imagine that you start sprinkling in your own creativity on top of that sure so that's how i see uh, that's how i see what's been going on from my perspective you know i've been keeping a close eye on what you've been doing um and it seems like what you do that other people have not done is literally just show up and do some work okay people most people in my experience think that their people are just going to call them they're going to reach out to them you know they're going to come find them right but in reality that's not how it is and uh people are sorely mistaken and they have a very rude wake-up call when they get into the business and they've invested that time in education and they've spent their money on fees and dues and everything and then nothing happens for them they're upset they leave the business whatever so you're a very good example of what can happen for people if you have the right mindset if you're willing to listen if you're willing to learn if you're willing to put in some work so with all that said Maybe you can give uh, everybody a quick intro about yourself. Definitely. Definitely appreciate uh, the time uh, inviting me on the show. Yes. So I um, I got into uh, real estate uh, this past year, something I was kind of uh, thinking of for the past decade, actually. Uh, I found myself staring at houses, looking at, uh, you know, different type of properties, and I and I would I didn't even have a, a cent in my account, but I would call and, and ask questions and mm -hmm. uh, get on the phone. So I noticed that I've I've always had a knack for uh, wanting to talk to people and wanting to get information, um, and that drive has uh, given me a lot of connections uh, since I work you know work in the community, I work with church base and just those kind of things uh, fundamentals of just being um, being active and. Um, you know, I'll never being shy to, to have a conversation, strike up a conversation with somebody really led me to <clears throat> drawn to, to the industry. Uh, because at the end of the day, it almost feels like you're you're not selling a house or you're not selling, um, you know, uh, an area or a neighborhood. And I think we've had this conversation before and you talk, it's, you're kind of like selling yourself. You know, you're selling who mm -hmm. you are and, and what you bring to the table. And I think what I bring to the table is uh, just a strong um a strong work ethic and always telling people if there's if it's a no now i'll find a yes for you later you know i'll look for an answer it's mm -hmm. always about finding an answer for maybe a hang up or a situation or a problem and i think when people look to you and they say hey i don't really know what i'm doing or what i need to do i'm say okay well well let's let's figure that out uh, let's find out what's what's the next step what is the next uh, thing that it's going to come in the process. So and I think people feel comfortable because they see how active I am. They feel like this is someone that is going to help us move to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that and just trying to be as my like as myself as possible, not a used car salesman. And say, oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to you know get you this uh, this million dollar house, you know, with the with the five dollar budget. I mean, I'm I'm always upfront with people and saying, hey. Um, this is where your budget is. Let's find out kind of what you can afford, and I'm gonna get you the best thing that I can find in that in that range. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I was making people feel good about about what they're doing, you know, because it's a big deal, you know. So if I if I don't if I show people that I care, you know, about what they want and what they're looking for, then then we're gonna find it together, and it's that energy is gonna like move push us forward. But when I'm like, oh, you know, I don't know, you know, negativity, yes. I think it really pushes people back. Here's what most people do, I think. They will start very jazzed up, <clears throat> very excited because they're doing something new. It's a new endeavor. They'll approach somebody or however many people and they'll say, hey, do you need my services? They'll say, no, I don't. Then they'll get all butthurt about it and get discouraged. <laughs> but they, what you're saying is you have to look at the long term right. because it's, it might be a no right now. They may not need you right now, right. but there's still value <clears throat> to opening that door. Because right. they will need you eventually. Mm -hmm. And so the game for you becomes getting to know them, right. giving them the opportunity to know you, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting to know them on a, on a very personal level, leaving, leaving the suit and tie at home, so to speak, right? And uh, forgetting about the real estate stuff. Because the deeper you get with somebody, the more connected you become to them, the more likely it will be that they will use you when they do need your services right and a key uh, another key thing that you said there is that you you truly care about uh these people and, and their situation you're empathetic towards uh every unique scenario because everyone is in, is in a different position right. whether that be financially or um, family-wise or whatever it is so i think that is absolutely key for people because you can you can just get lucky and close a few deals early on sure and you can make a few dollars and feel like you're successful. But if you're going to have a sustained career that's successful, you have to truly care. And I'm the furthest thing from someone who's going to sit here and, and just, you know, give corny quotes or like motivational speaking like that. But you genuinely have to care about the people and you have to care about um, everybody's unique set of circumstances. Sure. Yeah. Because sometimes your job gets harder. And therefore, your life gets a little bit harder because someone's um, circumstances are making you have to work harder for one reason or another, right? And that might upset some people. But you got to see that as a positive thing. You got to see that as fuel because in the end, the reward that you're going to get is going to be so much greater even than the commission check you get. Right. And this is how I feel you operate, just getting to know you a little bit, getting to see you in action. I feel that you care more about the people than you care about the the real estate process, which I think kind of sucks shit sometimes. Like when you're when you're deep in the trenches and you're you're working every day and it it's not always pleasant in the day to day. Because right. it's not a, it's not you're not trading, you know, effort for <clears throat> dollars. Right. Like you would just go punch in somewhere and collect a paycheck. You're actually you've got to invest a lot of time and effort and energy before you get paid. And you might not even get paid. You might mm -hmm. work really hard. And then something falls apart for whatever reason and you're very deep in the process and then it was all for nothing. Right. And that would scare a lot of people off, I think. I think a lot of people get very, very discouraged, <clears throat> quit. I think, and this is actually what statistically is going on. People don't last very long in the business. And if they do, they're not doing very much. There's not much activity because there's not a lot of effort. So, um, but you have decided that you're going to see the bigger picture you're not gonna, you're not gonna just gonna accept the first no, and if you do hear a no, you're gonna actually continue to put in effort, but in different ways. Definitely, right? So, um, what, um, what was what was the first thing, quote unquote, that you did that you felt some success from? Was it just making a a cold call? Was it putting something on Facebook? I mean, what, what was like the first thing you did that paid off? Uh, the first thing I think I, I did was uh, I just checked out, uh, people kept talking about my uh, sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I kind of didn't understand what that meant, the sphere of influence, sphere of influence. I'm like, okay, I'm not, I don't think I'm a super influential person. But really what, what I kind of got, got from that was sphere of influence was just people that I was connected with. So my first, um, <clears throat> my first deal was actually with a parent from uh, a school I worked because I had a second second job mm -hmm. uh, with an after school program, and I started talking to people, 
and saying, hey, you know, I'm I'm in the business in real estate. Like, you know, you know, if you need any help, I, you know, I obviously I, I take care of your children, you know, for three hours mm. a day and uh, you know four or five hours a day, and I and I've been in your lives for a little while, so we had a kind of already a, a mm-hmm. relationship. So I started talking with the parents and just letting them know that I was I was there and. You know, some would say, "Oh no, I'm you know I'm not interested," and I say, "Okay, that's fine. We just you know, if you ever need anything, like I'd love to help you out." And then eventually, there was one parent that um, he actually had a construction uh, company and he wanted to kind of invest into a property, rehab it, and sell it. And his main main goal was to to make some money for his uh, his his child. And he had a he had a, a son. And he says, I don't want my son to have the same struggles that I have. So mm-hmm. my my motivation is to get something that is a good property and we're going to, uh, you know, work on it. And he, we've started searching. So that conversation, starting with a conversation, he said, can you check this? And I said, I'll check on it right away. And I, I went and checked that out. I said, oh, no, that doesn't work. And then I checked. I said, well, how about if I send you something? And he's like, okay, well, you can send me something. And then we started Going out and, uh, you know, during the Christmas holiday, we were shopping for, you know, for a home and uh, we found something that he really liked. He really loved the area and he did a great job. He made it, uh, you know, he made it super nice inside. And that was really kind of the start of my success. I was like, well, I just got to talk to people, Mm -hmm. like actually just just have a conversation and let them know because there's there was tons of people that even if I put put it on Facebook, which I that ha, that has brought some success. But in the beginning, it's like people forget. But mm-hmm. if you're constantly like having conversation and you know your line of work comes up, you say, "Hey, I, I'm doing this," and it just sparks up a, "Oh yeah, by the way," and I think that that by the way mm-hmm. has been like um, really, really, really helpful in the in all my pretty much all my deals. So, day one. Entry level fundamentals work. Okay, it's much easier to sell to go to somebody who you, whom you already know and say, "Hey, I'd like to help you out if you need real estate services." Then it would be to approach somebody ice cold that you never met. Okay, fair enough. Um, so that can definitely spark, you know, a snowball effect because sure. once you get one, mm-hmm. all of a sudden that person's an advocate for you forever. Yep. You know, assuming you did a good job, which you probably did. Uh, and then when their, you know, cousin Joe says, hey, I need a, I'm looking to buy a house too. Hey, I know a guy, great right. guy, Ruben. And then the cycle continues. Right. Right. So there are many, many, many things people can do to prospect and generate business. But on day one, why make it harder on yourself? Right. Just go approach people that you already know. And you don't have to you don't have to hound them. You can just, like you said, strike up a, a very simple conversation with them that you're probably having already. But then the key thing that I heard you say was, uh, oh, by the way, I I do this. Right. And inevitably, it should come up in conversation fairly naturally mm-hmm. because it is something you actually do. Okay. Right. It's not manufactured, you're not making it up. So if you just are very simply talking to people like you would already, it's gonna come up. Okay, right. so now, um, what what did you after you got that first taste of success? Uh, I imagine you kind of got the bug, right? You kind of realize, oh, this this can work. This can actually be a good source of income. This can, you know, you know, I can reap whatever rewards I'm looking for with this, right? So, um, is this something you can maybe see yourself doing full time eventually, or is this or is this gonna or do you like just doing it as a, a co-career on the side? Yeah, at the moment I'm doing it as a co-career uh, because I still I, I love working with kids um, in the community, and my wife has like a, a community-based uh, organization called uh, the Beautiful Project, mm-hmm. uh, where they do a lot of community service. So <clears throat> I would like to uh, I, I wouldn't want to say it's a part-time. Definitely, uh, I like how George talks about a co-career uh, where yeah. you're, you're giving. It's not like you're giving half of your time. You're giving your available time, and you're giving the best. Uh, so I, m- maybe uh, it's still kind of fresh since I, j- I just started this past year. Maybe I could see myself doing it full time. Um, I know that it's pretty much full time on my mind. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'm, uh, you know, I'm constantly thinking about real estate. I'm um, constantly uh, talking to my, you know, my wife about this happened, and you know, I'm working on this, and she's like. She's starting to like learn all the lingo and like she has, she knows 
more than you know your average person so i know it's something that is uh, super important to my family obviously at the mo- at the moment because it's a, a big um, source of our income and we're helping friends and family so when you're helping friends and family it's really close to home you mm-hmm. know wh- when they're moving or if they're making a big move like that so uh definitely i would say um it, it may not be full time at the moment but it definitely is a full time job on my mind because I'm taking calls all the way to to nine. Uh, you know, sometimes she doesn't want to be too late, but even you know, if I if if need be, uh, you know, I'm available. I'll make sure that I take care of a, of a client if they have a question or something mm-hmm. before I go to bed. I'll say, hey, you know, I'll answer your question and then have a good night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so fair enough. So here's what I think. When you when you started out, you didn't start in any kind of different position than. 99% of people start. The opportunity was equally available to you. You didn't have any more or less resources. So why, I'm wondering why you're having success and most people do not. Okay, I know that's, that's an unfair question for you to answer, but I'm just thinking out loud here because most people really don't have success. So I'm trying to figure out what what some of those variables really are because you didn't have any kind of advantage you just had your cell phone and a big mouth okay Mm -hmm. let's cut the crap there so and you you're very you're a very very personable human being opposite of me okay (laughs) you when you speak to people i feel it that you genuinely are in the moment with them and that you genuinely care okay whereas a lot of people maybe come off robotic sure they have they have a they have a a motivation to be talking to you okay they want you to hire them they want to make money and so if i had the bottom line that's kind of what i would think is the biggest variable you have to and it's hard for people to understand this but you have to not care about the money you have to almost expect you're going to work for free okay because you know that what you're really getting as a reward is you are going to feel good because you did something good you, because the the sales process in real estate is a huge deal for people. Mm-hmm. It's always going to be a hu- the biggest financial investment most people make. Sure. The process itself is very stressful. Yes. So through that process, you are really anything but a realtor to people. Your life coach, your Definitely. you know who knows. You're 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 the maid for their house. You're the photographer, perhaps. You're the maybe you're. You're picking up their kids from school. I don't know. Maybe you're <laughs> you're their therapist because. I mean, that happens a lot. Over every little thing, people are calling you probably and saying, what does this mean? What are, you know, what do sure. we do? Yeah. So like, you are anything but a salesperson through the process. And I think you really embrace that is what I'm getting at here. And then in the end, yeah, you know, the deal closes, maybe you make some money, that's good. But if you're always focused on just the money, I don't think you're going to go very far. Uh, because in the real world, that's just not how it works. Like there's more to this, to this than people often realize um, based on what I've seen people that I've talked to. So um, yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'd say you have to actually care about the people go figure crap that you hear all the time. This is a people business. This is a um, people want to work with people. That's always the famous thing everyone says. And that's proving to be true. Again, you're, you're another example. Um, And I've got plenty of other examples too of people who, do not operate that way. And guess what? They don't have, they don't close any deals because they get very discouraged because they think that it's kind of a one for one play, right? They're going to put in a little bit of effort and if they don't reap immediate rewards, they feel like they're failing or they feel like they feel very discouraged and then they quit. So unfortunately, it's all upstairs, right? It's all between the ears in this game because the opportunity is is available to everybody, anybody. You don't need much. If you've got a cell phone and I'm sure you do, I'm sure everybody does, you can make you can make it happen in real estate. Is that fair? Definitely. Because I mean, uh, I mean, all you have to do is communicate with people. You have to find people. You have to talk to people. That's it. Talk to people every day. And of course, uh, there's very tactical things you could do. You have to. You're you are actually running a business after all. So you have to have some sort of business acumen behind you, of course. But um, the catalyst is really going to be how you feel about the people you're helping. And when I say that out loud and I hear myself say that, I kind of hate that because it sounds like I'm trying to be very rah-rah motivational. But um, 
it's it's just the truth i think fair yeah, yeah i agree i mean i think uh definitely when with uh the motivation is super important um you could kind of tell uh the the agents that are more just seeing kind of dollar signs when they see a you know a person come in and you know they give them a, a pre-approval or they you know and i've 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 had some clients that that they're coming and they're ready to go with the finances and they already kind of have what they what you know what they need or what they know what they want but i've also started like from the bottom you know where somebody literally i brought them into the office they had no clue about mm-hmm. anything about the process and we sat down I broke it down. I gave them different options, like for financing or you know down payments, down payment assistance. What's the difference? Mm-hmm. Uh, what to expect as far as like an initial um, uh, kind of investment of how much they they have to put in price, you know, time time wise and uh, with money. And I've seen that that I think that if people just want like an A plus client that is pre approved for a certain amount and is all all ready to go, then you will get those. But they're they're less and they're far few and far between. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna get a lot of people that are uh, either for the first time or maybe they've lived with family and now they're coming out because they're deciding they want to get something on their own. So I've I've embraced like you said just kind of the the idea of like hey I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of you guys let's let's do it like step by step I'm gonna hold your hand in the process and yeah it might it might take a while I might I might have to invest a little bit more time in explaining and answering questions. But but by the end of the process, they've learned a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I purchased my home, I learned so much. But I actually went through, I think I went through like four agents mm-hmm. because I didn't trust any of them, and then I felt like they weren't, they didn't have my best interest in mind. So that was that was a big thing, and I I kind of it kind of also pushed me over the edge to kind of say like, hey, maybe, maybe I can do this because if I see these agents that are they're not giving good service and they're just kind of like, well, you know it is what it is kind of thing or not being prepared uh, for a, a showing or a listing presentation, then maybe I can do this at, at a, a higher level because I actually do care about this. Mm-hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, if you're, like you said, you're just caring about the, the paycheck at the end, that process could take three months or mm-hmm. four months for you to get paid just for one transaction. So if you're not willing to really um, uh, go on, and it actually reminds me of another client that I had that I started talking to him and he was kind of in the middle of the process. He was looking for financing and we, you know, he just wasn't sure cause he didn't know me personally. We just were talking online uh, through Facebook and eventually he went and got the finance and he went with another agent and the other agent kept canceling on him because he had other deals and other clients. Maybe they were approved for a higher amount mm-hmm. and he never showed up. He was always late. He ended up calling me and we got a deal and found something within two weeks. And that was because I was there and I was available. And it's not like I was like, oh, you're just another transaction. Mm-hmm. So I think you're right about that. When you don't treat people like like their money or you know something in your pocket, you treat them like a person and like somebody you're really trying to help, mm-hmm. you close those deals. Not every buyer is a layup. Right. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes because of people's circumstances, like I said earlier, it gets pretty tough. Definitely. Okay. The chance of success might go down. Right. Simple example. They just don't have enough to put down. Okay. Sure. It's common. Now there's certainly ways to overcome certain problems, mm-hmm. but sometimes they're not obvious. Right. And sometimes they're difficult. They're low percentage plays. Right. And as soon as stuff like that starts to happen, certain agents will basically stop following up right. because now it's difficult. They don't see enough upside. It's not worth their time, whatever whatever excuse they make. But those people are still motivated to buy and they're going to buy with somebody. So you have a choice to make, of course. You can, you can um, stick it out. You can see the bigger picture. You can know that you're going to you're going to feel so much more satisfied in the end because you know that you help these people through a really tough time, a really tough process. And frankly, they need help. If they didn't need help, they wouldn't be working with you. You know, if it was that easy, they would just do it on their own, right? So you can't 
if nothing else, I think maybe you can look at the, the long-term play because those people, once you do get them into a house, they're hopefully going to be clients forever. And it's hopefully not going to be their only transaction. Right. So even if you're not getting paid a ton right now and doesn't feel like it's so worth your time for this for this one transaction, um, that investment you make is going to pay off maybe more later. Yeah. Not to mention, like we already said, they're going to now be big time advocates for you because you you not only got it done for them, but you went the extra mile. So they're really going to be advocates for you and they're really going to spread help. You, well, they're going to help you spread the word, which will hopefully lead to referral business. Right. So I think that's a key thing people miss. They only see it as this one transaction, but you have to see it as a bigger investment. Definitely. Uh, yeah, just uh, to jump on off of that uh, bandwagon for them to be your advocate. I actually had a, a client I went over um, over his uh, house warming party. Uh, he just purchased, uh, and it, it was a friend of mine. He's a, he's a barber. Uh, his name is Leroy, and just a guy that has so much energy, uh, so much life in him, and we we made it happen. It was very difficult. Um, there was you know other agents that maybe he knew, and you know I I just said listen if I find what you're looking for, and I'm the one that sends sends it to you, let me you know let me help you. So we went through the process. We got it you know got it closed. It was a, a tough deal definitely, but finally when we ended up closing the deal, he was so happy and so grateful that he had a big um, he had a big housewarming party maybe two weeks after. Mm -hmm. And he brought in a, a taquista, you know, like, uh, and they were, he had, when I got to the house, there was like 15 cars there or 16 cars parked on his lawn and in his driveway. Mm. And he was so excited. He put, you know, he put a, he, you know, he told me to stand up here. He goes, this is the guy that helped me make this uh, deal happen. If you need something, you need to talk to this guy. He's your guy. Mm -hmm. And it was so cool. And then from there, I, you know, I struck up a couple conversations and there, there's another potential client that, uh, you know, he's going through a tough time with renting and, you know, getting kicked out by his landlord. And now he's, he said, I'm not going to do that. This is a, you know, a city worker, you know, that, you know, that works uh, in law enforcement. I said, no, we're going to take care of that. I'm going to take care of you and make sure that you guys, you get what you need. So just off of that, like you said, because I stuck it out with him because I, I worked hard for him, but potentially I'm getting another client and, and it was great. Uh, just beautiful time, you know, at the housewarming. So mm -hmm. if you're a former client, invite me to the housewarming parties. They're fun. Mm -hmm. It's, it's always uh, like a, a proud moment for them to say, Hey, come to my house. This is my new place. This is where my safe space. So um, let's hang out. So I think that's always a, a, a definitely a benefit of uh, closing some deals. Mm -hmm. When I hear you tell these stories, it's like just the same loop over and over and over and over again with people who have had, who have realized success. It's always the same basic stuff. There's a lot of you know gurus out there, and you know people saying, well. You got to do this, this, that, whatever, you know, whatever, and fine. But if you don't have the basics right, if you can't simply talk to somebody, strike up a, a conversation, and eventually get to that, oh, by the way, moment, none of that other stuff matters. None of, none of your creativity matters. None of your uh, great ideas matter. You have to have the fundamentals correct in order to build on top of them. And that's what I keep hearing you say over and over and over again. It's what I hear from um, my broker, right? It's what I hear from every successful agent. It's the same stuff. So, and it's it's frankly pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty simple to understand. It's clear. It's obvious. So I still, I struggle all the time thinking to myself, why can't people make this happen? What's really the problem? I don't know. Because it's so basic, but yet they can't do it. Well, uh, I would say one one thing that um, I've noticed that is is a bit of a, a, a challenge uh, for agents. Uh, we, we live in a very um, competitive market, which I will say that I've had some success, um, but uh, it is super competitive in, in as far as uh, the state of Illinois. Uh, I was reading one of the magazines. It said that there's like over 77,000 agents in Illinois alone. Mm. That's that's a lot of people that are, are real estate brokers. So I know that a part of it definitely is a work ethic, which is a major problem. Um, I've talked to a couple other um, agents before I chose to to work with Weikert. 
um, I was looking at a couple other places and they were saying, telling me, well, out of, uh, you know, all these agents that are out there, there's, there's only like 10% that is really making things happen mm -hmm. that are That's really, true. uh, um, working and they're, they're very busy. So there are successful people, but it's a small percentage that are, they're just all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the people like what you're saying that are, they got the fundamentals down. They have a personality. They like to talk to people. But at the same time, there's a lot of agents out there. And I think that that's another, the uh, like kind of like the flip side of it is that there are so many agents and there's just, you know, uh, you always have a cousin or, uh, you know, oh, my wife that does this. So there there are those those no's or no, I really don't need your service, you know, and that's that's okay. Uh, to, you know, to hear that if, you know, if you got somebody else in this family, Hey, you know, great for you then you know, more power to you. But definitely, um, I think a part of it is, is definitely having those fundamentals and knowing, uh, knowing your market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. So what, uh, you don't have to give any real specifics here, but what really attracted you to your brokerage? Because like you said, you met with I don't know how many, but you met with multiple yeah. people. Um, what, I mean, what, you, you were brand new, so you didn't know any better, right? Right. So what, what was it that you heard or that you saw or felt that uh, made this seem like it was the right choice? Well, um, it, it was a, a funny story because we, I was in the middle of uh, finishing up uh, the classes uh, for, to, to take the test. I mm -hmm. was actually struggling, struggling a lot because I was a, uh, you know, full-time had, a full-time job and a part-time job. I had just gotten married and it was, uh, you know, just a bit of a challenge. And I said, well, let me still do my research because once I do pass this test, I need to figure out who I'm going to be working with. And I met with a couple of the major companies. Uh, I sat down with them. They broke down kind of like their packages and, you know, what the like desk fees or kind of what their company was all about. And there, there was a couple of really good ones that I, I enjoyed and I, I was really drawn to, um, but then I was driving, I was on my way to the Brickyard, uh, mm -hmm. Brickyard Mar, the, um, you know, right there by, uh, Narragansett and, uh, and, and, uh, yeah. Grand and, uh, Fullerton, I'm sorry. And, um, I saw this sign on Narragansett and Belmont on my way and it was the Weikert sign. And I was like, oh, I'll just call. And then I spoke with, with George and he was, um, just a, a great presence when we had a conversation we talked for like 20 minutes and he's like oh you know you're having a little trouble with the test you know you know you should come in and you know meet with uh with me and and uh, with my team and i said sure we scheduled a meeting it was like cold super cold i think it was at the end of november uh yeah i think then or yeah november december and we sat down and our not not technically an interview but our conversation lasted like two hours mm. and I was having a conversation with Mike uh, Ristaw, his, his son, and then with George, and we were just going back and forth. Uh, they broke the company principles down, but they broke what they, what was important to them for their company. And I just felt super comfortable with them um, because they really seemed like they cared. So it was like the same thing, you know, like we've talked about, like just caring about your, you know, who you, who you work with or, you know, who you're helping. And then there was just a follow up with them because uh, George knew that I, I needed a little extra help. He made a you know made a phone call. He you know he helped me uh, get in touch with one of the teachers that work in the office, mm -hmm. um, and we got it done. And he's like, "All right, man, don't give up. Like, let's you know move on to the next phase. You know, let me know once you once you pass. We'll get you signed up. We'll get you ready to go." So like that follow through. I had I had other conversations with with other offices. I left them and never got a call back. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not being upset with anybody else, but just feeling comfortable. Like at the end of the day, you want to feel comfortable with where you work at and what mm -hmm. you're doing. And I just really liked uh, kind of the, what my, what George and Mike and the team at with Weicker, uh like what they cared about. And it seemed like their main focus is family. Mm-hmm. So if their focus is family, uh, you know, the, the family unit, and that's super uh, important with me, so I'm going to stick with them. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what got me with Weikert. I don't want to get you in any trouble here, but did it matter to you when you were sitting down with any of these companies? Did it matter at all what logo was on their business card 
or what the title of their brokerage was, if they're you know a known name or an independent or whatever, did it really matter to you? Yes or no? It had no effect at all. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> zero. <laughs> so it good good. So it it again came down to the human to human contact. Definitely. And like you said, the other people they probably gave you a spiel. Yeah. We have this. Here's our tools. Here's our this that whatever. You're gonna make millions with us. <laughs> yeah. They tried yeah. to sell you on the company, yeah. and then mm-hmm. they didn't care enough to call you back for ten seconds the next no. day or whatever. Mm-mm. But George presented himself as, well, he didn't present himself as anything. He just was himself as, uh, and you really felt that he cared. Definitely, yeah, yeah. And they, one other thing was the Partner Up program, which mm-hmm. really attracted me too, uh, now that we're talking about it, mm-hmm. where um, uh, they would assign you with somebody to work with you for, for your first uh, three transactions. And um, Mike... Michael, he's I've driven him crazy uh, this over this past year <laughs> with so many questions, and he's helped me not only on the first three, but on like all my deals. And mm-hmm. we're you know we're I'm 10, 11 months in, and I'm still calling him. Hey, Mike. He's like, what's up, Ruben? I got it. What <laughs> what do you need? <laughs> so uh, I would say uh, it's not just the. Uh, it definitely is your own business. A hundred percent. This is your own business. This is how you want to run it. If you don't want to do anything, you don't have to do anything. But in uh, with this brokerage, it's cool because they they don't leave you by yourself. They make the investment yeah. in you. Yes. Now, they're human beings like you are. They probably don't like to be called all the time, but at the same time, they probably love it because it means you are doing work. Yes. And that's what they really, they, they appreciate that because they do the same thing. They're sure. working, they're working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay. So you might seem like you're annoying them, but really they like it. If I'm, if, I, if I'm speaking for them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. When people sure. call me for stuff. I love it. I yeah. don't care if it's the middle of the night. I don't care. Yeah, you may, you might annoy me in that moment because it's just bad. You know, I'm in a compromising situation or whatever. But I love that you're calling. I love that someone's reaching out and asking a question. Sure. They're not just winging it, getting themselves in trouble. They're actually uh, taking the time to to learn how to do it the right way. So, but yeah, bottom line, like I said, he. Mike, George, everybody is making an investment in you like they, like they do in everybody because I know it's, it is paying off and it's going to pay off even bigger in the long run. And eventually, you know, that'll turn over and people will be calling you for stuff one day, sure. right? And that's a beautiful thing. So, um, but you might not feel like you were going to get that in another, in another place. It might have felt a little more uh, corporate, I guess we could sure. say, where they might just point you to like a library and go figure it out for yourself. Or whatever. Now, again, obviously you don't have to disclose any details, but when you didn't know any better, when it was when you were it was day one, just past the test. Did anybody? Did any company uh, basically offer you a very attractive commission split that you almost felt like it would have been worth it, even though you didn't know any better? Sure. Yeah. I mean, there were there was a lot of uh, competitive. Um, Companies that had the you know different commission splits, but I I liked the way uh, Weikert the way they kind of uh, get you up to where you want to be mm-hmm. quickly. You know if you're working, uh, so mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty good. It didn't really affect because um, I think that when I passed the test, I you know I was just the only people calling me were Weikert. But then now that I've been successful. There's been a lot of poachers. <laughs> There's been a lot of people calling me, um, you know, sending me emails. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're trying to get you over with us. You know, come on over. And I'm like, okay, well, that's great. But uh, you kind of weren't there in the beginning. So mm-hmm. I, I definitely feel comfortable where I'm at, you know, and I don't think that there's a need for me to make any t- type of shifts. It's an interesting thing, though. Um, at the beginning, if a company says, hey, we'll give you 100%, of your commission or whatever, pay a fee, whatever it is. Every company is a little bit different. And it sounds very attractive because you go to one place maybe that says we'll give you, I don't know, 50-50 split or whatever. And the next place says we'll give you an 80. Next place says we'll give you 100. You don't know any better. 
So it's like, okay, I'm going to be able to maximize my profits here. This is great. But really, you're not getting a lot of value. You're getting a little extra money, perhaps, if you close deals. But what people don't understand on day one is that there's so much more to it. You're going to need so much more. You're going to need help. Just like you said, you're going to need somebody to call all the time. You're going to need, you know, training. You need it. But people don't seem to really understand that all the time. They just are, are motivated by the money again. And it's easy to miss. And so I think that's one reason why, you know, some people may trail off very quickly. Um, and then, of course, like just like you said, once you actually, you've put in the work, uh, another company, another set of people have invested in you. And then now all these people want to come out of the woodwork and say, hey, now we know that, you know, you're making money for the company. We'll give you a good split, right? And then people are definitely motivated to do that sometimes, I bet, because now they don't really need the training anymore because they've done it. They've learned a lot. So now, you know, maybe they sit back and say, hmm, I don't really need the training anymore. I can now just make more money doing the same thing now that I know what I'm doing. But you still hang your hat on the fact that, um, you appreciate how much everyone's done for you. And that in itself uh, makes you not want to do that. But it's a fascinating thing though, I think, because you certainly would make more money, but yet people don't do it because, because you kind of fall in love with everybody in your company. You, you, you become friends with everybody and that's worth the little less money that you're going to make. Yeah. Fascinating thing to me. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, how come nobody calls me all the time? What the hell's going on? <laughs> what the hell's going on? Uh, anyway, yeah. Any uh, any final thoughts you want to share? Anything? Uh, what uh, uh, final thoughts? Uh, interest rates are dropping. It's time to buy a home mm. or refinance. Hey, hey, hey! This is my <laughs> show. This is my show. Call Ruben. Uh, <laughs> Just yeah, you can call Ruben. That's okay. Uh, I'll just sit here and pretend like I know what I'm doing. Ruben, Ruben actually will be out there doing all the work, so you can call him. <laughs> thanks for having, um, thanks for having me on the show, man. Appreciate it. It's fun. Thank you. Do it again. Boom.